Hello everyone, how's it going? In this video, we're going to talk about Lucid, trading under the ticker symbol LCID. It has been one of the most speculated stocks in the Nasdaq over the recent years. Some have said that it is the next Tesla. Others believe that it's going to be a giant bubble that will eventually burst, and everyone involved would like to see the company doing well, at least in the short term, to be able to profit from it. As one of the heavy weights in the burgeoning industry, Lucid is also one of the few companies that actually has a product rolled out. As time went on, the stock's price action, along with investors' hype and hopes, went through a lot of roller coasters, and some are wondering if this is still a bandwagon they want to hop on. In today's video, we will look at Lucid and to see if the company still deserves to have a place in our portfolio, and if so, for how much. Lucid went public in the height of the EV craze back in late 2020 by reverse merging with the SPAC CCIV. The market was very excited about this event because it should mark the beginning of a new era for many shareholders who want to purchase an EV stock at an early stage. Back then, Tesla was making one historical high after another, and it seems that no one can stop the bullish tendency, ever. People were in a mindset believing that the bull market is never going to end because it hasn't really changed for almost 15 years at this point. The only true alternative for Tesla at that time was NEO, and investors were looking for a domestic company with better oversight and perceived safety regarding their investment. Although Lucid was going public in 2020, it is a company with more than a decade of development as a private company, and was able to prove to the industry that it is here to stay. We have to remember that the market mood was euphoric, and that there seemed to be no obstacle that lies ahead of us. The current price action acts both as a major cooldown of the market as well as an opportunity for a more sustained development looking forward. So, in terms of the short-term price action, Lucid stock has been maintained above the $10 level over the past few days, which is very important for the traders on a psychological level. Of course, given the level of institutional owners in the company, it's not like there's a majority of shareholders swapping their positions in and out every single day. Over the past five, over like over the past five days, I would say, Lucid stock went down by 8.5%. This is mainly due to the number of complaints that Lucid Air received, highlighting some hardware challenges of the EV company. The recent sell-off seems to have to be like a continuation of what happened before, ever since the market began to turn earlier this year. Even if there has been some attempts to recover here and there, sometimes lasting, you know, quite a while. Overall, the tendency hasn't really changed as the stock is down by 20% over the past month. What this would suggest is that the market doesn't have a lot of optimism in the current economic environment, period, and that Lucid really needs to prove that it can improve its own product quality as well as scaling up its production up in uh, 2023. If we look at the long-term tendencies, it's not difficult to see that the bubble that gave so much hope to traders around the world has now bursted. The market is no longer willing to blindly follow the latest hype. On one hand, the market doesn't want to persist on believing that the bull market based on assumption rather than actual production or the perspectives of growth on a you know spreadsheet or powerpoint rather than actual profitability in the forms of dividends on the other hand it cannot sustain the trend uh, when there are supply chain issues doubts on flagship companies within the sector conflicts around the world increases in interest rates and uncertainty in the economic outlook so Really, um, the market has long predicted that there will be a bearish market after such a prolonged bull market, and that most stakeholders believe that it's going to be a rough patch for at least a few years. The market has peaked twice in the past, and if the first peak was caused by hype, the second one was because of the rollout of Lucid Air. Lucid remains a company that has investment value for the years to come. The main question in everyone's mind is when should they enter in the stock? The long grind to lower price level is likely caused by the market trends 
rather than the company's own fundamentals, except for like the most recent one. So in that sense, things are not as alarming as they may seem. Now, on the other hand, we should also remember that sometimes, even if those grinds don't have an actual fundamental reason, they can last for a very long time. And they might bring the title to an unbelievably low price. Hylion, SoFi, and PaySafe are good examples. When we take a look at Lucid's financial, we can see that Lucid's profitability remains to be improved. It is a very encouraging sign to see that revenue has been increasing significantly from 97 million in Q2 to 195 million in Q3. On the other hand, the cost of goods sold increased as well from $292 million in Q2 to almost $500 million in Q3. It's interesting to note that the cost of goods sold increased more slowly than the revenue, showing that Lucid has been trying to control its expenses. Nevertheless, there are improvements to be made going ahead. Another element to observe is the operating expense. I believe that those correspond to the fixed costs and over the quarters, they haven't fluctuated significantly, which is a good sign for the company regarding cost control. With that being said, it loses about $700 million um, just in Q3, and we'll, this will add up if we annualize the cash outflows. Regarding cash, the cash reserves of Lucid is impressive from the outside, but if we think about it, with the operations still being on a deficit, the fact that it has between four to six billion dollars on the balance sheet suggests that unless operations begin to pick up significantly in 2023, which they're supposed to, which they're supposed to, we might see additional rounds of dilutions over the next month and years. Regarding liabilities, the debt that Lucid took on over the past few quarters have also gradually increased in size from below two billion dollars to above four billion dollars in Q3 of 2022. Simply put, liabilities provide financing to companies to keep the operations going. They may provide critical cash inflows when the company needs funds to operate due to the cash flow cycles and for other reasons. They differ from equity sales in that there is no loss of ownership. But there will be obligations to fulfill the cash outflows the, you know, in, both, uh, in both the forms of expense, like interest expense, and the principal payments. If the company fails to comply, it would be insolvent, and the goods would be liquidated with the equity held uh, by the shareholders either substantially discounted or reduced to zero. For the moment, I consider that the increase in debt level is normal, justified by the natural growth of the operations. With that being said, it is something that we have to keep an eye on in the future, because it may involve the going concern and cash flow availability of Lucid. Some additional relevant aspects are related to the current ratio and the inventory turnover. Current ratio defines the liquidity of Lucid's asset and how well they can meet the short-term difficulties. This number has been going down over time, suggesting that Lucid will be short for cash or the equivalent asset in the subsequent periods. So we cannot rule out the additional rounds of additional dilutions. The inventory turnover measures how quickly they sell their vehicles. The recent statistics suggesting that Lucid has no difficulty selling its vehicles, which is a testament of Lucid's brand recognition and reputation, as well as the pertinence of positioning itself as the high-end segment company of the sector. And it tends to be relatively recession-proof as long as its clients have the means to buy new cars. Overall, those figures paint the picture of a company that is growing in its operations, but may lack a little bit of discipline in cost control and needs to scale up its operations to start having positive cash flows. So let's also take a look at the shareholder composition of Lucid, as this is something that is quite important to determine if the company is better for trading or investing. Lucid is currently held by the institutional buyers, for the most part, at 71.5% of the total float. That suggests that the price volatility of Lucid will be lower than other growth stocks, mostly owned by retail traders. 
The reason why this might be the case is because institutional shareholders have far more diversified portfolios and don't mind the short-term volatilities. They also tend to stay in a stock for a longer period of time, which is a good sign for those of us who want to invest in Lucid. Regarding the short selling pressure, Lucid has a sizable short position, around 5.2 million shares currently being shorted, corresponding to about 22% of the total volume. So this volume can help us understand what some market participants think of Lucid, and if there is a concerted shorting operation from institutional owners. In this case, I believe that the short sellers are anticipating that the stock is going lower due to the market trends. There are some real potentials for a short squeeze, but the overall volume of short positions suggests that there's just a substantial size of people believing that things are going to go worse before they get better. Not necessarily a concerted operation per se. If things get different though, I believe that much of those short positions are going to be redeemed, which also forms a second wave of additional demand, pushing the stock to higher levels. So based on the analysis above, I would recommend to follow up closely on Lucid's price action and to build up a position over the next 12 months in a more closely monitored version of dollar cost averaging down. Um, in the sense that, you know, we shouldn't buy the stock when it goes higher and only add up to the position if it pulls back or it goes lower. Because I recommend holding the shares for at least 12 months um, I would say that the short-term volatilities don't necessarily matter that much regarding exit strategy. The maximum exposure I would recommend is between 5 to 8% of your portfolio.